We are back with Mary Madeline from Washington, D.C., who appears on the CNBC cable network every evening at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, and here is Ellen joining us on the toll-free in Bristol, PA. Hello. Hi, Tom. Good How evening, Ellen. I'm fine, thank you. That's good. Uh, Mary, congratulations on the baby. I think that's wonderful. Thanks, Ellen. Uh, my question for you is, I was wondering, um, what do you think really defeated George Bush, um, and who you think the Republican nominee will be? So it's really two questions. You're allowed I two tonight, Ellen. Got a Thanks, we, we have a special running, yeah. <laughs> And good ones too. I think the um, the what beat George Bush was the economy. Even though we were had, had given to the media tons of evidence that the recession had bottomed out and the recovery was underway, they never uh, they never quite played it that way. And there was a lot of insecurity and anxiety in the public about the economy. We never got past that. But I would never consider this a, a victory for Clinton. He only got 43%. Only four presidents in our history have gotten such a low plurality. Yeah, but let's stay on the point here. Why, why do you think Bush lost? And let, me give, you, it, and let me give you a theory. It's the economy, stupid. Well, yeah, well, well, let me tell you something, Info Babe. You know, all of you back there in the Beltway, sometimes you lose track of what America sees. And I think what had a great deal to do with defeating George Bush in 1992 was his arrogance. Uh, I remember him at a I remember him at a campaign stop talking about foreign policy, and referring to Clinton and, and Gore and saying, "My dog knows more about foreign policy than these two bozos," and I think that kind of an attitude went went sour with the American people. And I think they started remembering George Bush after the debate with Geraldine Ferraro in 1984. We kicked a little ass last night, and I think America got just a little bit sick and tired of George Bush's arrogance in a time when and the perception was America wasn't doing very well. So chew on that info, babe. Let me respond to that <laughs> info, brother. Uh, the, the Ferraro thing was off the record. This is a typical press uh, scam, which they always do. And the Bozo thing was a poor choice of words, but I ask you to look at their foreign policy accomplishments to this day. <laughs> Think of a better word than Bozo. <laughs> Ellen, now, I'm glad now you look, <laughs> don't fight about it, okay? No, no, we're, no, no. I, I never fight with info, babe. I know, it goes, I know it's fraught with peril and leads to going off the air. <laughs> <laughs> no. Thanks, You're Ellen. You're entitled to your opinion, oh, wait, you little question. socialist. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you here, as long as we're talking about perception, and I'm, I'm saying perception there, not reality. I got The you. perception is that Newt Gingrich and the Republicans are a bunch of meanies who are right. bent on uh, right. uh, cutting back money right. from welfare, from right. kids, from handicapped people, and turning America into a sweatshop again. Now, I know that that's not the reality, but there's that perception out there. The perception is owing to the fact that there's only one way, or there, the main way we get political information in this country is through the mainstream press. I wish there were more shows like yours and mine, where people could, politicians could come on and have some time to talk about can talk unfettered to the public. I know you hate, because I've read all the interviews, your past interviews tonight, that you hate having politicians on, but so much of the, the information that has caused these bad numbers on Republican has been totally wrong, starting with cutting the lunch program. They're increasing the school lunch program by four and a half percent. Only in Washington would we call that a cut. And the, tra the numbers the negative numbers on the Republicans have tracked exactly with the negative coverage. This is a nonpartisan tracking system that's done this. So I think a lot of the problem is owing to the way in which they've been portrayed. Before the Congress actually was in session, they were getting 53% positive coverage. By the end of the first 100 days, they were getting 71% negative coverage. It's hard to break through that and get a fair uh, perception out there and you're right to say perception and perception is important because perception is reality in politics and it's a sad state of affairs and I think that's why shows like ours are yours and mine and stuff are becoming so popular but what, an, what an astounding drop off from 53 percent positive right. to 71 percent negative that's a 124 point that's right. swing for heaven's sake you are an arithmetic genius that's right in three months under three months pretty pretty astounding isn't it yes it is it, by the way it's almost unbelievable it's not it's not my numbers it's media monitor robert professor robert lichter's numbers he's not he's not a conservative he's not a liberal he's nothing he has no axe to grind he just monitors the the kinds of information that people are getting on issues and politics and politicians and he also was the guy who told us last fall that Newt Gingrich, the man, 
got from Labor Day till October 20th, if you think 71% negative is something, Newt Gingrich got 100% negative coverage. I don't care what you think of the guy. He can't be wrong 100% of the time. No, but, uh, but it doesn't help very much when we hear things like women are not, uh, can't serve in the military because they can't stay in the trench all the time and men want to go out and hunt giraffes. I mean, you know, and I think Newt realizes probably he said a dumb thing. And people see something like that, and the comedians, Letterman, Leno, et al., have a field day with it, and here comes Mr. 100% negativity. That's right. I mean, that's exactly how it happened. But what we, what your viewers don't know, aren't told, is that Newt, that was extracted by the mainstream cynical adversarial political press from a class he was teaching at Kennesaw. And if you've ever taught classes, you know the way to make kids stay awake is to use sort of bizarre and compelling and provocative metaphors, which yes. is what he was doing. Yes. And that was extracted out and plastered across the political pages. And did you even know he, it was from a class he was teaching? See, I mean, that's the way this information is portrayed to but, the public, but I, but out I, of context. But I love the way you say those cynical people, while you say, as you refer to the president's foreign policy, and, and you use the quotation marks, and there's no cynicism there at all, is there, Mary? None whatsoever. I'm a partisan. I'm not a cynic. I am a partisan, and I disagree with his foreign policy, and I particularly disagree because he ran to the right of George Bush in the campaign just to be look good on foreign policy, and he's he is governed, if you will, if you such a thing vis-a-vis -vis foreign policy, as nothing. He has no foreign policy. Talk to any of these foreign leaders. Travel around the country. Well, they think we're buffoons. Cer certainly nothing to measure up with our taking care of Noriega in Panama. We'll be back with Mary Madeline at 1-800-9. Look at she's throwing it's your stuff. show. You got it in the break last word. <laughs> we will be right back after these messages. <laughs>